plaster around the house. In this video, I'm going to show you how to plaster a wall. Like this. I'm going to show you a few little tips along the way. This wall has a front and two sides a bit like a chimney breast with two corners. In this example, I've already attached the corner bead, but I've showed how to fix these in another video. To see more of my plastering tutorials, please click on the web links that I've put below in the description section, and there will also be web links popping up throughout this video. On an old wall like this, we've already got an old layer of paint, so the first thing we need to do, once we've attached the corner bead, is we need to give it a coat of PVA. The PVA I've mixed three parts to one, so I've done one part PVA to three parts water. Now according to the strength of your PVA, you may need to do it a bit thinner, maybe 5 to 1, or if it's a bit weak, you may need to do it 2 to 1. It also depends on the absorption of your background. This is a pretty decent flat wall with a good coat of paint, so I've gone 3 to 1. I don't need to do it any stronger. All I simply do is mix a PVA in a bottle and shake it round. An empty plastic milk bottle is really good for this because it has measurement units on the sides. So you can work out the 3 to 1 ratio, no problem at all. I then pour as much as I need into a bucket like this and I apply it either with a brush in the small areas or with a roller like that. We need to do two coats of PVA. I like to do one coat the moment I turn up, get the PVA on and then it'll go nice and dry and tacky. Then once I'm happy that the walls are prepped, I put another coat of PVA on before I mix my plaster. This usually gives it about enough time to go nice and dry and tacky and then we can apply the plaster. So let's go and PVA the wall. you're happy that your first coat of PVA is dried, let's go back and put another coat on and then we'll go and mix the plaster and come back and get it on the wall. So to mix the plaster we literally add a bit of water in the bucket and you can see there I've literally gone about two inches high in here because I don't need much plaster for this at the moment and then we'll add the plaster bit by bit, I'll mix it with my paddle mixer which is just on my standard B&Q drill. a bit like this. That's a tad wet at the moment. Let it stand for five minutes and it'll set out a bit. Now if you put some plaster on your trowel like that and you turn it upside down it should stick like that and that's when you know you're about right. First thing to do get a clean bucket of water and just wet your hawk. Get your trowel, do exactly the same. Take a bit of your plaster. I'm just going to show you using a tiny bit of plaster there but if you want it on the outside of your trowel you just scrape that way and it's there and then you can plaster up like that. If you want to plaster this way from the inside of your trowel, just turn your trowel around, scrape it that way, okay? So if I take a little bit of plaster, I'm going to put it starting on top on the inside of my trowel like that. So if you're going from the ceiling down, you need the plaster on the outside of your trowel. So obviously, you need to take it this way and just hook up like that, so it's there. And then when you've got it this side of your trowel, you can obviously take it up there. And then if we just go to the side of it, and then down, you see you start to get a nice line across the top, like that. So go across and down. It's what you want to avoid, is putting too much near the top at once, because do you see there? You start to get a thick line near the ceiling, and it'll spread over the ceiling. So so what you want to do is start lower and then work your way up. Otherwise you'll end up spreading on the ceiling like I'm about to do because I stupidly showed you how to do that as an example and now I'm making a mess of my ceiling. Here's another little tip for you. When you've got a bead on the end here, it tends to bring the wall out a touch. Now what I'm doing here going in this way is just getting the plaster and filling in the line. But you need to go back over it in a vertical motion like that. Because what you'll find is if you go this way, you pull the plaster in and you pull it out and you end up putting a little curve on the wall. So make sure now you go over it with another load of plaster and just go up the wall like that and it'll fill that out and give you a nice straight line. And by the time you get across the wall, it'll look nice and level. I've done my first coat of plaster on this front wall, now I've got to do these two side walls. Now it's entirely up to you whether you want to leave it or not. I've left this one now for about 10 minutes and it's going off a little bit tacky but it's still a bit wet. But because of the bead, I'm happy to plaster up to it. But I mean, it is good practice just to leave that until that one's gone off dry and you'll find it a lot easier then when you put a paintbrush down the end to tidy it up. You won't be messing around damaging the plaster. So I'm going to put the first coat on the sides now and we're going to let that go off for about 20 minutes and I'm going to come back and plaster the whole lot. 
plastering the top of the ceiling, you can use the top of your trowel as well, like this. Just get a bit of plaster on the tip of your trowel and just do that. And like I said earlier, don't go right to the ceiling, just squeeze it in and give yourself a neat line and then you can work your way across. Or of course, you can just go down this way with the trowel, it's entirely up to you. Don't forget, once you've got that plaster up to the bead like that, get your trowel and fill it that way. And that way you won't get that curved line. And then finally we're going to plaster this third wall on this side, which is only a small one. plaster the three walls, now don't be too fussy, you can have the odd line here and there, let the plaster go off a bit and let it go almost tacky to the touch. So you want it to feel firm, but you don't want it really to leave any finger marks, you just want it to kind of feel tacky, then we'll go mix some plaster and we'll get the second coat on. Now your second coat could be ever so slightly thinner than the first coat if you like, and you don't need to apply it as thick, you just want to push it in nice and hard over the top, good coverage, and then that will fill in any gaps or any bumps that we got, and then we'll let that go off and we'll go over it again and I'll show you how to polish it off. Now you want to get a paintbrush with a little bit of water on it and just as the plaster is starting to go off just go around these corners here and wipe the plaster in neat in the corners, alright? Now what you're aiming to do with the brush is apply the pressure to the ceiling, not to the plastered wall because you don't want to take the plaster off. So you're just doing this as you do, you take out any ridges and lumps that you created with the plaster and obviously it's going to need a coat of paint on the ceiling, which will go over this because we're smudging a bit of plaster there. But what we're doing is trying to get a nice smooth finish in the corner and that'll give you a nice professional straight looking line. Then you want to do that then the side of your walls as well, where they meet the door frames. So I'm happy this has now gone off. It's gone nice and tacky, so when I touch it, look, it's hard. I can't leave a dent, but it is a little tacky to the touch. So now it's time to go on with my second coat of plaster. And just do exactly the same as before. dry now. It's still ever so slightly tacky to the touch but it's more or less hard. So now is the time to get a nice clean bucket of water, get yourself a brush or you can use a little spray bottle, whichever one you want to use. And don't soak the wall, just a little bit of water on the wall and then we're going to go over it with a trowel and do what's called polishing off and that'll help smooth out any lines and we'll get it nice and shiny and make it look lovely. Sometimes I like to just put a bit of water on the trowel and do it that way. And then just do nice long sweeps. And you'll find that'll start spreading the plaster around. You get a little bit of plaster on your trowel. If you've got any gaps, just do that. Push them in and then go back over with the trowel like that. The important thing with this is to make sure your wall is dry enough. If the wall's still a bit wet, leave it alone and let it dry out. Otherwise you'll find you'll start to get little bubbles where the plaster's getting too wet. Do some nice sweeping motions, like that, right the way up the wall. Then just keep doing this over your wall, then go from one wall to the other in the same order that you plastered them. And once you've done each wall, give it a few minutes, let it dry off again, and go back over it. And usually two is enough. If you want to get it really shiny, you can go over it three or four times, but there's really no point. Because if you want to put paint on it, you don't want it too shiny or the paint won't get any purchase. Before you finish, just get into all the corners with a slightly damp paintbrush and just clean up all the edges against your door frame, your architrave, against the ceiling. And the other little tip i got is, just wet your finger slightly and just run down the edge of your bead with your finger. So just go like that, right on the tip, and that'll just take off any excess plaster that's gone slightly hard and it'll come off and you'll end up with a nice smooth finish. And you can see by just running your thumb over the angle bead and taking off the excess plaster, it just leaves a tiny bit of metal exposed and you get a lovely smooth edge. So there we go, plastering finished. For more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell.